he is shredded. Like, look at that. Look at the glutes and hams there. But his arms are small. That's got to be a growth priority. That That's the first thing that stands out to me about his physique. I mean, his conditioning is great. Where are the arms? If, like me, you compete in classic physique and have a not so insignificant case of body dysmorphia, then watching a classic physique pro show can kind of be like kicking yourself in the balls for 45 minutes straight. So masochist that I am, I sat down this last weekend to take in the IFBB RGB Pro and my commentary is coming up and stay tuned till the end for my recap of the results and the winners. Also, super quick announcement, I am relaunching my course website after switching platforms and you can check out the new site right now at darrenstar.com. I have three courses available right now if you're looking to level up your training, your diet, or both. Also, if you're curious, in the recap at the end, I break down the scorecards from this show and explain exactly how the judges arrive at the final results. Okay, on to the recap. Let's hit it. Okay, here we go. We have, I believe, 11 guys here in Classic Physique. Got some pretty sharp physiques here. There is commentary going on here. Who is that? Amin Baidi? is center left there, um, did not have any kind of midsection control on his transitions. You gotta watch for that kind of stuff. Like it's not just about when you're in the poses, but it's when you're in between them as well. Now he's shredded as hell. Look at the glutes here, it's crazy. Um, but watch him as he turns around and see, see that midsection, midsection control. Like you got a really wide range of physiques up here, just as far as like just the width that you're seeing in people, the conditioning as well. Keep in mind, in, in the pro ranks, doesn't matter how tall you are, everybody's in the same class. Yeah, see, he's got the blown out distended gut there and he's just showing it off for the judges to see. You gotta control that, dude. You gotta keep that sucked in, in between poses, as you're transitioning. Honestly, uh, center right, that's Joshua Bridgman. He got kind of blown away on the back pose there, but I kind of like his overall shape. Starting with two guys from Tupelo here. That's Jeff Hollenbeck and Mafuz Havit. Far left and center left. Jorge Herrera, Jesus Martinez, Tony Tavares. Rounding out this five here. Tavares on the far right has that crazy shape, like super tight waist. Lats just blow the hell up. Like that overall shape is really what you want. Guy in the center, who is that? Jorge Herrera. Legs on him are pretty nuts. My brain, I just have an easier time processing five guys on stage versus six. If I was a head judge, I'd be like, okay, hold on. Mr. ADD here, let's bring it down a little bit. Just give me like four or five at a time. <laughs> yeah, his condition of that back pose in the center, Herrera, that's, uh, that's crazy. Ooh. Glutes are dialed in there. Hamstrings are popping. Right now they're looking for conditioning, of course, symmetry. Whatever we can see, we judge it. I mean, the time is the balance, exactly. You want to make sure you can hold those poses with some stability as well. Uh, yes. Martinez, the center right, was really shaking on that back double bicep. So you want to look good, but you also want to show that you've got control over your physique as well. I think Tavares could be a little tighter. He's getting outsized on a couple of those poses as well, but Man, I really like his shape Much overall. Gabriel Aguirre, okay, okay. this year, forget about last year, he was 14th in Texas, he was 9th in Tupelo just uh, two weeks ago. I've done that one before. Have you? Yeah. Very good, he's gonna find himself a little outmassed here in this show. Overall package and presentation looks really good though. Conditioning is there, like all the guys brought it, at a first glance, everybody brought it in terms of conditioning. Nobody really looks all that off. Yeah, right glutes now. are good. You think he's going for first place, really? You sure about that? Uh, I like his obliques. The, yes. the yeah, details. really, yeah. really sharp yeah. conditioning here. That. Really like that. Just, just, just on the verge of crispy. He's, yeah. he's there. I like it. That's good. And to all you NPC athletes, even though uh, the vacuum is not judged, it's it's always impressive to do, yes. but it also helps with streamlining your waist. Yes, definitely. Right. As well, right? Uh, the vacuum isn't judged. Did she really say that? Be able to hold your tummy in like, yes. is everything is judged. Yes, it is. <laughs> everything that you put on stage is judged. Really it's not like they have a score sheet where they're like, well, biceps, check. Oh, triceps, that's only a six out of 10. It's like, no, everything is judged. Everything is like how you present yourself, total package in every pose. 
hyper aware of it yes. because it's so easy so, to do it. Good, good. I think he's going to find himself a little uh, a little outmatched in the size game here, but we'll see how it looks. Yeah, that was nice. Okay, so this is Anthony. Anthony Barbera. Yes. Yeah, so he, he's looking a little undersized as well, just thinking back to a few of the guys that we saw earlier. Um, he did the Texas Pro last year, and I think he did the Columbia Pro. Again, forget about last year. How about this year? He did the Atlanta Pro. He took fourth in Atlanta, and he took third in Columbia this year. I don't think anybody's off. I think he is not quite there. Not something that comes natural to all of us. No, not quite there. I'm thinking about the Atlanta show. Like it's a pretty big show. If he took fourth in that, I'd have to go back and compare against the photos. But I imagine he was probably a little sharper. And that was also, you know, that was six weeks ago at this point. So to kind of um, uh, th this might just be like, you know, he's fading a little bit. You know, <laughs> just as the season wears on, trying to do two pro shows six weeks apart. It's hard to do. Oh yeah, that also goes to yeah. He's not quite as uh, as sharp and dialed in as Gabriel was, who we saw before him. You know what? I didn't get a chance to talk to him much, but everyone that I did talk to, they feel confident, and you can kind of tell in their conditioning. Like midsection, midsection. He was the one in that first group. I was saying you got to control it. He has small arms. Uh, I, I I disagree um, on his side chest. I think I think it's a weaker shot. His arms, like he he is shredded. Like look at that. Look at the glutes and hams there. But his arms are small. Um, like that's got to be a growth priority. That that's the first thing that stands out to me about his physique. I mean, his conditioning is great. Where are the arms? Um, in classic physique, you really want to see that. I haven't seen anybody like actually out of shape yet. No, I haven't either. I haven't either. It's yeah, well, we've only seen three people. <laughs> I mean, I I would tend to agree. I haven't really seen anybody out of shape either. This is Josh, Joshua Bridgman from the UK. I like his color. Started with Miss Physique. Okay, this is Joshua Bridgman. Uh huh. This is first. So I wonder what his weight cap was. Um, so I understand that he's trained or coached. He said he, he wonders what the weight cap is. It's true. Everybody competes in the same class. But depending on how tall you are, there are still weight caps in the IFBB as well. They're higher than the NPC weight caps, but there are still caps. Always just always too big for Miss Z. Right. Yeah, I like his look. Um, he is taller, so um, he's got a little bit more frame to fill out, but that's that's good. Alex Cambronero from Miami. Yes. He's his proportions are just. Yeah. Can I use another big word? Preposterous. Really like his look. It's just I I don't know if I competed with him. Yeah. And he's in all the right poses too. Amazing. Very impressive. Yeah. He won the Masters O last year. Right. Yeah. Abs are super, super dense. So his, his muscle belly is really kind of showing like pretty. everything that you want to see in classic it's physique. Classic poses. Yes. Like his symmetry is good. His conditioning is great. Um, He's like super, super full. He looks really dense and really carved up right now. Like hit the mark just right. No spilling over. From his wife. I know that she she's here. Okay. And I, and I know that I saw her. Yeah, I like him a lot. Great pose right there. Okay. Awesome. Right, right. Good job, yeah. Alex. Excellent. Jared Feathers. Ah, uh, the YouTube sensei. Jared <laughs> yes, Feathers. Exactly. Jared he Feathers. Posted, uh, his, I think an Instagram post, even though most you see a YouTube sensation. Uh, where his waist looked like it was. I only know him from working with uh, Dr. Mike. Such a taper on it. Um, um, so. I'm sure there's more to him than that. Uh, he, he is maybe just the littlest bit off here compared to some other guys. Like, still really in shape, just not quite as, as um, crispy. Some weird tan stuff going on through the spinal erectors. I think he even came up with a YouTube video where he talks every time he's letting someone work with him. Uh, yeah, so with, with Jared here, what I'd like to see is like take everything on him and blow it up by about five to seven percent. Um, I'd be curious to see where he is relative to the weight cap. I feel like he could come in a little bit tighter, a little bit crispier, um, with just a little bit more size. Jeff Hollenbeck was second 
in Tupelo two weeks ago. I like the way Aldi probably just kept it tight. Oh, now that's a nice twist right there. Yeah, that is a really good twist. That's a great pose right there for him. You can kind of tell the ones that really, really practice and the best time. I said in Tupelo, I thought maybe he was just a little too dense. Um, I also was very critical of the Tupelo show in general. I don't think the stage was very well lit, so everybody looked kind of soft. Except for him. <laughs> like, he, he was sharp enough that he was able to kind of shine through in that, like, not quite as poorly, what, as, as well lit stage. Um, and uh, really looked sharp. I think we're not going to know for sure. That's great. Right, exactly. Because everybody looks great by themselves. I think we're not going to know until we see some comparisons. Really? You think? I like his density. I like it. Shout out to Pro Tan. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like his physique. There's just something. I feel like it's it's missing a little something here. Mafus Habit. Okay, Mafus. So, I, he, he was third in Tupelo two weeks ago. I actually liked him winning that show. Yes, he got third right after. Yeah, right after Jeff. So, they're battling again. Quarters. That looks great. That takes some flexibility. And sometimes to do that, I right? think you have yeah, to go I can't slow do that pose. Into that pose. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, you don't get the position right. You don't get the yeah, I'd, I'd go slow into that pose and I'd never get out of it because I'd have tweaked my back. Straight line while just crumple straight to the ground, probably. You gotta have some body awareness, I would think. Yes, for sure. Yeah, it looks maybe maybe not quite as sharp as he did back in yeah. Tupelo, to be honest with you. Like from here, like his, his midsection just looks like it's not quite as sucked in as what I remember seeing before. Um, some of that might be like selection of poses a little bit. I'm not sure. I mean, it looks great. You got to keep in mind with the pro show, anything negative that I'm throwing out here, we're really nitpicking. And the, the unspoken part of this is everyone looks awesome. Okay, we know that. But it's a pro fucking bodybuilding show at the same time. So we have to nitpick things. I tried to do the vacuum. God, that's the hard stuff. Yeah. That's good. I still like him. Um, I've, I've seen others I like more, but I like him. Jorge Herrera. All right, so he comes in and goes straight to the back pose. It's like, when you know you've got it from back there, why not? Like, that is peeled. I just know it's in October. Yeah, I know. Last year was another month, and then I know. That's excellent. Yes. Nice. That's a great side. Everything looks really, really tight and compact on that side yeah, shot there. I really like that. Oh, yeah. that was yeah. Hamstrings for days. That's an excellent pose. You know that's his best pose when they start nodding their head. Yeah. <laughs> Serratus are really dialed in, too. Oh, yeah, the hamstring up to the glute, just like the oh, shape and the roundness oh, there. Like, holy crap. These guys are on it. Um, yeah. Wow. Yes. You hear that new pose? Now, again. I feel f I, I reserve the right to change my mind on this later, just because when you see everybody in person. But nonetheless, I'm going to throw myself out there. This is my top guy so far. Oh, that was nice. That was nice. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. I'm throwing it out. I'll reel it back in later if I need to. But <laughs> there it goes. He has lost a point for me on that. Look at the face. The whole this thing with the crap. I hate that Great so job, much. Jorge. I hate it. Personal preference. It's a lot of confidence to this show. I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Way to go. I'm only docking to a point for, on that in spirit. <laughs> so we just had Jesus Martinez from Arlington. That's great on one of the smaller ends, but he has come. He is smaller, yeah. His condition is good. His, his, um, he brought a good package. He just did the Texas Pro. You wouldn't know it to see him right there. He doesn't look like he's a smaller guy. Right. Yeah, uh, no, you, you would know to see him that he's a smaller guy because we've just seen other guys in front of him that were outsizing him by a lot. And his conditioning is good. His conditioning isn't great. And if you're going to come in a little bit smaller, you've got to really bring something that's extraordinary. Like you've got to have some muscle groups that are just like, holy shit, those stand out without being imbalanced, which is tricky. Or you've got to bring like next level conditioning where you're just absolutely fucking peeled to the bone. Um, and he's not like he's good, right? But if you're going to be undersized, you can't just be good on conditioning, or you're going to find yourself in the second call out. He looks great. And to be clear, for anyone who wants to comment, like, dude, what can you say? You're not up there. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> I, I fully acknowledge that. I am myself a very average amateur bodybuilder. 
back. Tony Tavares, this is a guy in the uh, in the symmetry round that I thought really, really brought out. I really like his shape. That pose is nuts. Tight waist, huge lats. He owns this awesome roofing company called Lanier, so he's been busy since that weather we had, so he was he had to pull out of that one. I saw him turn out I saw him at the Olympia. Yeah, I like what the legs are doing there. Looks good. His physique has come such a really, really great pose right there. Plays a big part of this uh Tony's prep as well with the workouts yeah. and posing. I like that good detail in the back. The side poses are really like really excellent for him as well as the front pose. That's great. He loses a little bit for me on the back shot just because he's got so much wow yes. factor on the others that um, yes. when he hits the back, you're kind of expecting more of the same. Like, holy crap, blow me away. It's not blowing me away. It's good. It's great. It's just, I don't think it, it quite lives up to the other poses from behind. Backstage, and I feel yeah. that's how he does his posing. He told, Tony told Ray. Really good. When really I come good. back, let's work on my, yes. It's such a satisfying feeling when, when you get. Hear your name out there. Yeah. And just, it is a satisfying uh, feeling. And when you're not in that first call out, like, it sucks yeah. ass. You know? Because that's your confirmation that you put all your effort into prepping for this show. Shout out to Galvanize Productions. I'm putting a great show on. I've been there. Um, alpha. Uh, interesting. Interesting. I can't read numbers. Yeah, so that's Alex. From right to left, Jared, Alex, Joshua, right? Jorge at the end. Um, Jorge at the left. end, yes. Nine and then uh, it's so Tony Tavares, be. second from the left. That's good. I don't know if I would have Jared in there in the top five. I'm not sure who else I might have in there, though. I think Jared's just a little bit softer compared to everybody else. Um, that being said, he doesn't really look out of place here. It's not like, oh, he shouldn't be in there. It's like, I don't know. I might want to just go back and rewind the tape and take a closer look and see who else I might throw in there. Um, otherwise, I mean, you know, based on what I said for these people and the individuals, like, I'm pretty much on board with all this. And I see the... Yeah, yep. I agree with that. So yeah, I think the center, so. Right? When, when you get moved into the center, you know, the closer you are to the yes, middle, yeah. the more likely it is that you're going to have a higher placing. To so the outside here, you're probably looking at fourth and fifth. And I think that's about right. Honestly, that's probably where I would keep them all. So you got, you know, Jorge winning this show. Again, this is all speculation just at this Note point. Things can still change. The legs first, yeah. guys, before you do the you got Joshua and then Tony, second and third, somewhere, you know, in some order there. And then Jared and Alex, fourth and fifth, some some order. Yeah, and what she said, I don't know who's doing the commentary here, but she said you hit the legs first always. So you get your feet set into a pose first. You always hit your legs and get those engaged next. And then you have to keep them engaged as you get the upper body into it as well. But also, like, keep your midsection in place while you're doing the whole thing, too. So the longest wind up into a pose I've ever seen. That's good. You see, right, Tony's shape here, Tony's honestly. Back looks incredible. Or his back looks, they, their backs all look good, but those two. His shape, I said it wasn't really blowing me away as much back. as um, yeah. it was on the others, but on that one in the comparison, like I liked his, just his shape better than everybody else. I think he could have a little bit sh more sharpness from behind, but looks good. But, uh, yeah, this is. They don't have. Good job, guys. Okay. Great job. Wow. So we'll see the remaining six in the second call out here. No. Uh, they're keeping so they send one, two, and three oh, back. They, they keep four oh. and five. Alex and Jared. Yeah. And then we're going to add three more to that I mix. I can't look down for one minute. So this would be four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight. Four through eight is what we're looking at here, ostensibly. Oh, no, they're bringing out everybody. What the fuck are they doing? So, so <sighs> who, who left us? Uh, yeah, Jorge so left us. Top three left. Tony and left we're left us with the remaining Josh? eight. I believe so. No. That's Probably a big not. last call out. Yeah, it's too many bodies to look at. Yeah. It's eight guys, right? Yeah, okay, so that's, uh, is that Mafus? Or is that, that's Gabriel, okay. Yes. A lot Just of shifting around here. Getting out there and getting the. Period. So Emin um, has show, kind of uh, jumped up over Jared here, so he now might be in the uh, in the running for fifth, I possibly. Alex, some years ago, I think he and Jared are kind of fighting it out for fifth and sixth. Amin is the one I was really harping on for his midsection control, so continue to watch that here. 
Yeah, if, if I was a judge, I would, I mean, I would be making comments on that and I would be giving them that feedback and I would be saying, you gotta fix that. And I would be doing that just because that has historically in bodybuilding, not so much classic the, physique just because it's newer, but in bodybuilding has I been something that has really, really been a problem um, for the sport. No, 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 and so you don't want to start to, to see that no, lack of midsection control yeah, we're creep we're into classic we're physique. We're and so right. for me, as a judge in classic physique, I would be harping on that. I would be scoring people down harshly for it just because I do not want to see that creeping into classic. I want to see you have excellent control over your midsection every second you're on stage. You know what? Whether you're in a pose or not. Who and, Jorge is not and I know still Josh, there. I mean, I know Josh left. Was that it? Maybe. There's one more that left, I thought. Jorge, Josh, and Tony are off stage. Pay attention. I'm having a hard time reading their numbers. I know, the numbers. Yeah, the focus isn't great. You also just look at who's standing off to the stage right now also. Yeah. Like they have the impression, they have the Thank advantage I think of actually being in the room. And posing and posing them all the way. So that's another reason to practice your posing. So you got a little yes. bit of posing endurance. Absolutely. bring up a good point you know sometimes and she was concerned with uh, somebody I forgot maybe it was are we back again that must be my foos that's Jorge that eight. Yeah, that's nine. Eight. nine yeah I guess it is an eight it's a nine. Is it? Oh my God, it's a nine. No, it looks like, it is an eight. Jesus H. Oh my gosh. <laughs> to be clear, Jorge in the middle, Joshua to the right, now to the left, Tony to the right. Third at Tupelo, right? This is probably a big deal for him then. It, it is not him. It is not him. That is Jorge Herrera from Mexico in the middle. Yes, he is Jorge winning this show. Tony brought the fullness out there. Uh, he brought the conditioning. No, he didn't. He's not on stage right now. <laughs> oh, All of them have man. great quads. And you can make an honest mistake, but please figure it out. Please recognize that that's a nine, not an eight. It is three different body types. I think it's, it's nice when you've got three guys, yes. I will just say exactly. that I think it's the ridiculous quad, to move people around yeah. on stage. Like you can't compare, Especially in this case, that, that Jorge with Joshua because there's a guy in between them. It's like, of course you can. And Give me a break. It's just stupid. That, that speaks volumes, yeah. No, there's number eight. So this must be nine, because eight just walked past us. Oh, wow. So that must be so nine. This, so it is him. It is so it is, it is Jorge. Yes. Sorry, or hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They are working. There's Joshua in the center now. Josh just wiped off that sweat. You know, one thing I've noticed that's sexist in these shows oh, is nobody ever asks the guys if they keep them up there for a long time. Okay, you got one more round in you? Every head judge always asks was, that of no, the women once they've sure been up there a long time. Poses, okay, poses, you got one more round in you? It's like, of course so they fucking this do. Why it looks like it's nothing for him. Stop asking you dumb know? questions. And it looks like Jorge is just like, just chilling too. Like, I never ask that to the men. Yeah, I think it's Jorge's show, clearly. Um, I'll be shocked if he doesn't win this. Yeah. I don't think the other two are undeserving. I just think he's... That much above everybody else. It's gonna be a long day. Show day. The round is of always the a long between day. Tony and Jorge yes. are amazing. That's very good for Tony coming back from. Right. Yeah. You know, but yeah, if what they said is true, and Tony's been uh, pro, so I knew that. Tony's been off for uh, a couple of years. You know? um, that is that is a good bounce back for sure. All right.
Awesome. Really good stuff. Great group. Good job. Good job. And there you have it. Now, to be clear, this is definitely a smaller show, and I don't expect anyone from here to really be in the running for a top spot in the Olympia. The top guys there are either pre-qualified from last year already or have secured their qualification at an earlier show this year. The last thing you really want is to earn your Olympia qualification now and then have just like another six weeks to kill until the big dance. But one person find themselves in that position now, and that is Jorge Herrera, who won this show, I think, pretty handily. Uh, he brought a super dense, super conditioned, and very balanced package with a great presentation as well. My comment to Jorge in theater parlance is no notes. If he's able to show up in six weeks looking just like this, I think that's about as good as he can do for this year. And to be clear, he will be looking competitive up there if that's the case. Uh, in second place was Tony Tavares, and I think this was the right call. His shape is absolutely nuts. His conditioning was great, but next to Jorge, he looked just a little bit softer, which is really a testament to Jorge and not a knock on Tony. I think if Tony can match that level of conditioning, he's going to be someone that everyone is going to have to watch out for. He's got a bit more of that cartoony proportioned look uh, that does very well in classic. And in third was Joshua Bridgman from the UK. And you have no idea how hard it is not to call him Joshua Bridgerton. Uh, again, absolutely the right call here. Taller guys definitely have a bit of added degree of difficulty. And it looked like he had a good five to six inches over Jorge and Tony. It just makes for a very different look, very stretched out and harder to have that wow factor as far as shape goes. I'd be curious to see what he's weighing in at in relation to the cap, um, but he's probably got some room to grow. Rounding out the top five was Alex Cambronero in fourth and Jared feather in fifth. I mentioned in the first call out portion of the commentary that I'm not sure that Jared really belonged in that group, but after looking back, he definitely did. Uh, I do think there's a bit of space between fourth and fifth here, but there's no one else that I would have placed in that top five instead. Quickly looking at the score sheets, we can see as is often the case, finals were not judged, meaning the routines have no bearing on scoring at all. You can also see with three judges scores available, a score of three, is as low as you can get, which indicates first place. If you count by points, you can see that because all the numbers are in multiples of three. That means the judging was unanimous until we get to seventh, eighth, and ninth. You can tell there was some disagreement among the judges there as Gabriel Aguirre finished seventh with 22 points, where 21 would have indicated agreement among all the judges. Same with Anthony Barbera in eighth and Mafuz Hawit in ninth. Just a curiosity. Coming up, we've got shows in Sarasota and Warsaw, Poland this weekend and then San Antonio and London the week after that. So possibly four more Olympia qualifying spots coming in the next two weeks. Stay tuned. <laughs>